Hi guys, welcome to my Revise With Me revision series video. So today we will be looking at uh, IFRS 13, okay, fair value measurement. Now let us look at the definition of fair value. So IFRS 13 defines fair value as the price that would be received to uh, sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability. So basically we can come to a conclusion that IFRS 13 uh, uses an exit price rather than an entry price. Now, to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction, that means basically we are not looking at situations of for sale, which is generally uh, lower in terms of value. Okay, so in an orderly transaction between market participant at the measurement date. Now, what happened here is this, the very first thing now we can see from the definition that IFRS 13 emphasizes on the use of market price. So the very first thing we want to look at over here, it's the meaning of market. So IFRS 13 requires an entity to use the value, okay, the market price of the principal market. Now, because when we talk about market, there are a lot of market out there. So, which price of the, which market should we choose? <clears throat> so, basically, we will choose the principal market. So, the principal market, so what is the meaning of a principal market? It is the market with the greatest, okay? It is the market with the greatest volume. So, that means the market that has the highest volume. Now, you have to be very careful, okay, when determining the principal market, the entity must have no restrictions, okay, no restrictions to sell, okay, so if there is a restrictions to sell in that market, so it cannot be taken into consideration as part of the principal market, okay, so a principal market is the market with the greatest volume, and the entity has no restrictions to sell in that market. Now, because of this requirement, okay, because of this requirement, we can come to a conclusion is that different entity may have a different principal market. So, uh, every entity, okay, uh, I mean, not really every entity, but different entity, okay, may have a different principal market, okay, because of the restrictions to sell. Now, so what if, okay, what if in the event, the principal market cannot be determined? Now, if an entity is unable to determine the principal market, now, if the principal market cannot be determined, then we have to base on the highest and best use, okay? All right, so if the principal market cannot be determined, so we will use... Uh, we will base on the highest and best use of the asset. Okay, now when we say we base on the highest and best use of the asset, now this time we have to consider several aspects. Okay, so the very first thing when determining the highest and best use, so an entity will have to take into consideration Okay, the transaction costs when determining okay, the highest and best use. So we have to incorporate the transaction costs plus the transportation costs. So in determining the highest and best use, we have to incorporate both the transaction costs and the transportation costs. However, if we are measuring the fair value, okay, when measuring the fair value, we will exclude, okay, when measuring the fair value, we will exclude the transaction costs. We only incorporate the transportation costs. So that is regarding the principal market. Now let's move a little bit further. Now we know that IFRS 13 uses valuation technique. So there are basically three different valuation techniques being used by IFRS 13. Now, 
IFRS 13 emphasizes on the use of observable, okay, maximizing the use of observable input and minimizing the use of unobservable input. So, therefore, there are three different valuation methods. Okay, first one is the use of market approach. So, uh, the use of a quoted market price. The second one is the use of a cost approach. So, take for example, if we are talking about a non-financial assets, okay, so potentially we will use the replacement cost. Okay, so the price the entity will have to pay if they were to buy the assets again today. Okay, and finally, an entity may also use an income approach. Uh, basically, an example of an income approach, okay, we might be talking about the present value uh, technique, okay, where a future cash flow are being discounted back to its present value. So we base on a single cash flow in present value terms. So IFRS 13 does not favor any one particular method, but IFRS 13 did emphasizes the maximization of the use of observable input and minimize the use of unobservable input. So as a result of that requirement, now we have what we call as the fair value hierarchy. Because IFRS 13 emphasizes on the use of observable input, so we have three different uh, valuation, I mean three different level of valuation, so which is the very first one, the level one input. Now, the level one input is basically the use of a quoted price. So we will use the price based on the quoted price. So if the asset or liability has a quoted price, so an entity will have the, to use the quoted price without any adjustment. Okay, so an entity must not make any adjustment to the quoted price. However, if there is no level 1 input, then an entity will be using the level 2 input. Okay, so the level 2 input is the use of the observable input other than the level 1 input. Okay, so we will be using the quoted price of a similar assets or liability. Now, however, if an entity is unable to use the level 1 or level 2 input, then finally an entity will rely on the level 3 input. Now the level 3 input is the use of the unobservable input. So this is definitely the most unreliable among the three different level of input. Okay. <clears throat> So basically, this summarizes our IFRS 13. Okay, so hope that uh, gives you a very quick uh, revision on your fair value method.